to thread this um, AR-15 barrel. It's one of the heavy bull barrel stainlesses. Uh, we're going to put a half 28 on this end here. Uh, so we just put one of these protective um, sleeves that they ship the barrels in. I just put that over that so when it's in the lathe it doesn't get marred up. And then we use a brown paper bag to keep the jaws from marking up that. Um, it gives a nice grip to the barrel, keeps it from slipping, and that way it'll, it'll um, clamp up nice and tight. Um, we'll get it set up here in the lathe and we'll see about getting it indicated and ready to go. This all clamped up. We got the dual indicators on there. I have a precision ground rod that fits into the barrel about three inches with um, bushings that match the barrel ID um, and then it sticks out here about four inches or so. So these are both one ten thousandth indicators that I put onto this rod um, to get that set up. Um, this one's showing maybe about three and a half thousandths um, at the muzzle tip and this one is reading perfectly zero right now um, so we're going to use these four bolts here to the front to change the the axial run out and then we'll dial in these to make the chuck square um, this is a chuck that was made by straight shot um, gunsmithing it's the true bore alignment system um, works very well for getting the barrel set up when you don't need a lot of the um, the outboard spider which would normally go on the outside um, especially with the CNC lathe um, the headstock is too long to um, run that kind of setup with this but this we got a six jaw chuck that clearance evenly on the barrel um, and then we're able to do all the adjustments that a spider or an outboard um, indicator would end up allowing to run on a typical lathe setup but then it's not putting the stress points of, of trying to dial that chuck in because this is a separate clamping to what all these these are doing out here um, so these just take a um, 5 16 allen wrench um, and so we'll just start going around and we'll get this indicated and we'll come back here and show you the final readings here uh, once we get it set up and then we we're going to do one more process after this. I have a long stem indicator that will actually reach inside the bore and being able to read directly onto the uh, barrel rifling itself and get that final, final setup. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back with the indication process. Here we're back and we got this one. Just a few tenths of a thousandth movement there at the muzzle again. And this one is about one ten thousand, maybe even a little bit of a jump there. Um, this is close enough to where we'll get this next indicator set up in there with a long stem to reach inside the bore and measure directly on there. That way we're getting a true read out of the actual bore itself. We'll get that to where it's running perfectly straight. And then we're going to put the half 28 threads on it. We'll run the program and get this ready to go. To our final setup here, we got the indicator onto the uh, cross slide of the lathe here. Um, but this is an inner rapid 5 tenths of a thousandth indicator. Um, so we get this set up, whatever this is all the way in, it's got a two, hundred, or two and three quarter inch long stem that goes back into the bore itself. Um, now you're going to see it has some needle movement there back and forth. That's the uh, indicator rolling over top of the lands and grooves there. Um, but as you can see, we just got about a two and a half ten thousandths of an inch since these are five tenths it's split in the line there um, to where whenever we move this back and forth it's actually not too bad right now but we're going to get this a little bit closer um, that way we make sure it's the best that it can be um, and we're going to wind this out here um, out to the edge of where like the crown area would be um, we'll take another reading here, um, and this is measuring right at about 
perfect almost maybe one or two tenths of a thousand there on that so we'll see if we can just get that last little bit out there to see if we can get it reading perfectly zero there um, and then we'll be able to run the uh, run the program and make sure everything's gonna work good for for to put that on there and make sure there's no baffle strikes or anything like that um, if the customer is gonna use a um, suppressor or if they put a muzzle brake on there we don't want any bullet to contact anything as the bullet passes through we want it to be as perfect as possible that way it ensures accuracy and provides the best performance for the for the um, rifle itself all right we'll be back here we'll get this final dialed out these last couple tenths to see if we can get that perfect um, before we ever start running it so we got this all back indicated here and we are no more than a width of one of the indicator lines now the distance between each of the lines is five ten thousandths of an inch um, so we are well probably below two tenths of a thousandth um, and that's reading right at the crown um, wind this in there that two and three quarters of an inch to the back We'll show you what the back is reading here. Um, same thing, it's just staying about the width of a needle um, from zero there. Um, so you can take this indicator and put it anywhere um, within that last little bit of that barrel and it's reading pretty much dead on zero. Um, and that way, that way when the bullet leaves the barrel that everything is perfectly straight. Um, some barrels have a little bit of a curvature. It's hard to drill a 28-30 inch hole um, without a little bit of a wander and stuff like that. So we just want to make sure the last two to three inches is perfectly um, square. So that way when we put our threads on there that, that we're dealing with that part of the barrel. Once the bullet starts the rifling it can follow that little bit of a curvature. The, uh, and so that way we can get this perfectly running. Um, now we're going to get this all back out, we'll get the machine fired up and we'll cut some threads on the end of this and this one will be pretty much done. Hold up my program, I already have preloaded up for the half 28. Um, so I just had to change a couple of, like these values and stuff like this right here to change for the bolt or the uh, barrel diameter itself. Um, just so that way we're not going to cut the tool right into the first pass. Um, so that way it'll make nice, nice light depth of cuts for that. Um, so now we're just going to touch off the zero with this tool here um, to our barrel. So that way we have a reference point to go by for the machine. So we're just going to wind this down and we're just going to touch the tool off to the front edge here so that way we're going to set a zero right on the front edge of that gun itself right there so we'll just wind this over until the tool stops just gonna touch this off. I'm just doing this by hand so there's no nothing going on there with the computer servos and stuff like that. Um, so I just wind that over here with the hand crank dials down here. Um, so we're not even having the machine move itself right now. But I just want to get that tool to where it's making contact with the front edge of the muzzle. Um, then we're gonna go up here and we're going to go to our offset page. And we were going to hit Z measure. So that will change our value right here. Um, so that way now the machine knows that this is our reference point. So then we'll be cutting our threads back here. Um, and we'll be ready to go. We're just going to pull this away. So we don't crash the machine um, so we just want to give it some clearance so that way it can kind of do its thing um, we're gonna have to change this to a different one and we always set reference with the tool number one um, with a CNC 
Um, but the first tool for cutting right now is I'm just going to use this real sharp degree angled uh, 55 degree um, diamond. Um, so that way we get a little bit tighter tool nose radius and it doesn't leave as much of a um, undercut at the bottom of the, of the cut whenever it OD turns it down to the half 28 diameter. Okay, so we've got the program ready to go. We're just going to reset there. Um, we're going to come in kind of slow just to make sure nothing crashes to get the, the uh, part going and then we'll turn it on to full speed here. <laughs>
Spread right up to that shoulder. Um, that tool's actually about five thousand, so maybe two human hair thicknesses away from hitting that shoulder of that um, muzzle there. I always run the uh, threading tool twice here for this tool deflection or a little bit of there. Um, that way everything gets cleaned out whenever you have the majority of the bulk material removed and then just come back in and do a real fine clean up pass after you run it again. And we might have to move the tool in a little bit. We'll check it here with a uh, half 28. Um, threaded piece that I use as a checker, um, so that way we know we're cutting it off. Um, but we'll blow this off and we'll get it cleaned up and we'll put a check on it and see if we got to move the uh, tool in to do another final pass. Bit of a little end cap that I made up so that way we could check the half 28s, and this is threaded. Four a half twenty-eight. Get this lined up here. Gonna wind this on, nice and smooth. There's no play left and right there. So it's good quality thread there, nice and smooth. You can put it on, no wrench required or anything like that. Um, we can wind that all the way up, and there it is. So it winds all the way on. We know it's nice and smooth, nice class A thread. Um, so that way there's just no play in that at all um, And that's why you want it so that way it, you know you got a good quality thread and that'll fit any of the uh, Muzzle brakes or any half 28 suppressors that they're gonna put on the end of that um, I'll have to go back and look to see if this needs undercut for this some require this little Blank section at the back be undercut if the threads are running all the way out like this is um, Where you got thread all the way out to the end um, we might need to go back in to cut that, but I'll have to consult with what the customer was putting on there. Um, this may actually get cut out here, um, so that way the threads will actually go into that blank area and seat directly on this shoulder up here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Makes it very nice and simple to, to put a thread on there, but the setup is what takes the longest part of it. Um, getting that perfectly lined up for the center of the bore um, setup is everything. The CNC just makes it thread really fast and be able to control it and being able to thread right up to that shoulder. Um, I have the program already set so I already know it's cutting a half 28 to give us a good snug fit on the uh, on the, any attachment that's going to go on there that's not going to have a sloppy loose fit. Alrighty, thanks a lot.